Welcome to the Hambro D500 System Installation Guide. Since 1970, Can-Am has delivered more than 10,000 construction projects with the Hambro D500 Composite Floor System. Combining the benefits of both steel and concrete, the Hambro D500 requires a simple installation system. This video provides instructions, safety guidelines, and tips to facilitate the installation of the D500 floor system. The general contractor defines the minimum personal protective equipment required on construction sites. In general, hard hats, safety vests, and steel toe boots are mandatory, while safety glasses and gloves are strongly recommended. Use a crane or any safe equipment for hoisting the joists. Securely attach the sling, but never attach cables to the web members. Be careful not to damage the joists during unloading, storage, and installation. Lay the joists on a flat, level surface. Stacking more than two bundles high is not recommended to prevent damage. If any damage occurs, contact Can-Am immediately as repairs or modifications might be needed to ensure the system's integrity. Hambro offers large spans up to 43 feet. Position the joists as follows. 1. Lay the joists on the bearing surface according to the installation drawings. Prior to fastening the joist, insert one roll bar at each end of the joist to ensure that proper spacing is achieved and that the standard roll bar will fit and lock into the notches into the top cord. 2. Fasten the joist to the bearing surface. The Hambro D500 composite floor system can be used in various types of construction like masonry, steel, wood, and more, which changes the fastening requirements. Follow the installation drawings for your project carefully. 3. The length of the Hambro joist shoe bearing must be as specified on Can-Am's drawings. Make sure the Hambro joist bearing has a minimum of 3.5 inches for a 4 inch shoe or 2.5 inches for a 3 inch shoe. Hambro system does not require any shoring or reshoring, making it a very simple system to install. The key to the system are the roll bars, exclusive to Hambro. You will use these together with the spanner bars to support the plywood sheets. Position the spanner bars perpendicular to the roll bars to support plywood joints. Roll bars should be placed at intervals indicated on the installation drawings, that is, from 7 to 21 inches. If the slab is more than 4 inches thick, move the roll bars closer together as per the drawings. Make sure that the handles and brackets of the first roll bar next to the bearing element are facing the wall so as to facilitate stripping after the pour. Lock the roll bars firmly to hold the joists in place. This also gives lateral stability and torsional resistance. If placing two roll bars from two adjacent joists into the same notch, make sure that the roll bar ends are staggered from bay to bay to ensure ease of removing roll bars during stripping procedure. Be careful to keep the roll bars in the correct position. Do not allow them to roll over. The bottom cord roll bars should go all the way across the bay's length. For the telescopic spacing, the roll bars should be held firmly by yellow blockers. The last span at each end of the bay should have a piece of wood firmly fixed between the bearing element and the last hand row joist. If you have non-standard spacing, use the telescopic roll bars. Mini joists are used in corridors or other narrower places that are less than 8 feet. It is important to ensure that all plywood joints are adequately supported by intermediate spanner bars. Details and specific requirements are available on Can-Am's drawings. Use full sheets of plywood at this step where possible. Bundles of plywood should be placed on supporting walls or beams, never on the joist system. Attention should be given to gaps between the plywood sheets to prevent the concrete from dripping during the pour. Place standard sheets of wired mesh over the top cords of the Hambro joists, as per installation drawings. Use Can-Am's drawings as a guide, overlapping the sheets and tying them to the joists. 
You are ready to pour the concrete. Check that all roll bars are correctly positioned. Reduce the roll bar spacing if the slab thickness is greater than 4 inches. Check that all plywood forms have tight butt joints and have not shifted laterally onto the top cord. Counter check placement with the drawings. Do not apply additional construction loads. Do not pour excess concrete. No worker should stand below the slab during the pour. Always start at the center span of the joists as Hambro is a cambered forming system. Apply a light vibration during the pour to ensure thorough coating of the top cord. Use a guide for concrete thickness. Lasers or other instruments are not allowed due to Hambro joist being cambered for the self-weight of the concrete. When pouring the concrete, maintain a minimum depth of one inch above the top cord as per installation drawings. Finishing equipment should weigh less than 800 pounds, excluding the operator. You can remove the roll bars and the plywood forms 24 hours after the complete pour. If the temperature is above 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius, and when concrete reaches a minimum of 3.5 MPA or 500 PSI. Between 24 to 48 hours after the pour, people can walk on the slab without any extra load. After 48 hours or when the slab reaches 7 MPA or 1000 PSI, the floor is ready to use for loading, not exceeding admissible loads indicated for the specific capacity. Replace the plywood and roll bars in their racks and move them to an area for easy crane hoisting. Use appropriate fall protection equipment when moving plywood and roll bar racks through door and window openings. You're ready for the next floor. We thank you for trusting Can-Am and wish you a successful installation with your Hambro D500 composite floor system. Visit Hambro.com for drawings and the installation manual. Hambro by Can-Am, a trusted partner since 1961.